This is Jeff Johnson presenting the surgical technique of the Moxia procedure or the modified oblique Keller capsular interposition soft tissue arthroplasty. Indications for this procedure include advanced hallux rigidus where otherwise MTP arthrodesis would be considered. You need 30 degrees of MTP range of motion at least with minimal toe deformity and adequate capsular tissue. If the tissue is thinned or scarred, then an alternative technique using allograft tissue has been described, and I have a YouTube video that's listed here that um, presents that procedure. Relative contraindications include MTP joint ankylosis or significant varus or valgus deformity. This is a rationale slide for why a surgeon might consider soft tissue interposition, interposition arthroplasty over arthrodesis, and I will let you pause on this and review later. The Moxia procedure was initially described by Mrozik and Miller, and what I am presenting here is a slight modification that involves five steps. Elevation of the dorsal capsule, dorsal chylectomy, oblique resection of the phalangeal base with transfer of the capsule to the plantar plate, and then repair of the medial capsule. This is a positioning and equipment list, which I'll let you pause on and review later. Note the medial skin incision and the position of the digital nerve of the gray toe in the inferior aspect of the skin incision once the tissues have been retracted laterally. This nerve is retracted inferiorly. Then the extensor retinaculum is divided and the EHL tendon retracted laterally to expose the dorsal capsule. And then the dorsal capsule elevation along with the EHB insertion is begun over the proximal one third of the proximal phalanx. Note how far distal to the MTP joint line that the capsular reflection begins so that you make sure you have plenty of dorsal capsule to reach the plantar plate. Then the capsule is further reflected over the dorsal aspect of the metatarsal head, but it is left attached proximally. Then the microsagittal saw is used to perform a dorsal chylectomy to decompress the joint. Note from the uh, illustration that you can make several different cuts at different angles to completely decompress the joint and create adequate space for the dorsal capsule. Then an oblique resection of the proximal phalanx is performed to further decompress and create space for the joint capsule. Note that you wanna leave the plantar plate attached with your saw cut. Switching to a, a different patient now, note that there's different amounts of resection needed for each patient, depending on how lax or, or mobile the joint is and how large the osteophytes are. So these resections will be different from patient to patient, but you need adequate space to transfer the dorsal capsule and you need at least 70 degrees of dorsiflexion on the table to make sure that at the end of the procedure, you have enough motion. Then place four sutures at the distal edge of the capsule into the plantar plate, leave them untied. This is a 2-0 braided non-absorbable suture with a small semicircular needle, which works best. Also a distractor allows easier suture placement. Then place a fifth pull suture into the distal edge of the capsule and deliver this through the bottom of the foot so that when you pull on it, you can deliver the capsule down into the joint firmly against the plantar plate. Then tie those four sutures with knots on top of the capsule. Note that if you need more capsular length, you can reach up into the proximal end of the incision and tenotomize the EHB tendon, which will give you a little more capsular excursion. Then repair, reattach, or tighten the medial uh, joint capsule to stabilize the toe in neutral alignment. And this might require a couple of drill holes through the bone on the medial edge of the proximal phalanx. Then repair the EHL extensor mechanism, retinaculum, and then um, close uh, the skin. This is how the passive range of motion of the toe should look at the end of the procedure. Note that there's both dorsiflexion and plantar flexion, and it should feel smooth and fluid like a normal joint. The post-op protocol involves a soft tissue dressing for two weeks. Weight bearing is tolerated, then range of motion of the gray toe and transition to a shoe as pain allows. This is a patient at two and a half months from the Moxia procedure. Note the active range of motion of the toe. Note her pre and post-operative radiographic findings and her ability to stand on her toes uh, without pain. These are additional resources for the Moxia procedure. This is the video that I mentioned regarding the dermal allograft procedure. And these are other publications that we have written on this subject. Thank you for watching.